because I can't fix a meniscus, but I can still even, no matter what your meniscus looks like, I can still help you run a marathon, Mm -hmm. you know? So it's figuring out what the, what the end goal is. And that takes time. Yeah, it's not time. It, it takes more than five minutes, you know, to really dig that deep. You know, a crazy discussion I had with a friend the other day. His his wife is a midwife, and he was mm-hmm. telling me about how she was going off to deliver a baby, and it was at forty two weeks. I said, "Why? Well, I thought babies are typically ready at 40. He says, yeah. "No, that's what the healthcare system tells you because they they schedule that out." the human body is not as predictable as a baby's ready at 40 weeks. He says, sometimes they come early, sometimes they come late. He said, but when you look at the healthcare system and the dollars and cents that they're more concerned about than the health of this child are the real actual data it should be. He goes, you'd be amazed. He goes, 40 weeks is the average. He goes, but you know, the human body <laughs> has its own clock. And I, and I ache in that a lot to just our own physical therapy and strengths. We're all mm-hmm. different. And as you suggested, some people might need more time in therapy and some might need less, not what the provider's going to cover you for. Right. 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 You know, and I think it's, um, w- when we're trying to get efficient with human health, which is unique. I mean, there's certain things I can say, you know, if you do this and you don't exercise, you sit on the couch all day long, I'm pretty sure like these things are going to happen, but there are people that smoke into their nineties and they die of something else, you know, so it's variable. And I think if we want to look at how do we help the person in front of us, we have to figure out what's the unique situation, but then these unique situations aren't always unique. It's just not as, uh, simple as I got to fix the, um, cholesterol, I have to fix the the knee range of motion, I have to fix the back pain, it's really what does that person want to be doing. And some people don't have big goals. And that's okay. Some people don't know that the big goal is a possibility for them, because they've never been given that possibility. And if we can dig into those things, then I think we can really help people exceed their expectations, rather than like, where we all generally people get is scared because of what their friends tell them or what they hear on social media or TV, et cetera. And they're like, I can't do that anymore. And that becomes a no life. Right? Mm-hmm. It's like, cause they've been told no. Yeah. Well, how unfortunate is that? Because that's the reality. There's a lot of yeah. no lives out there. You know, you, you've, you've talked pretty clearly about your practice and what you're able to do from a cash basis and the support of your clients in the way that they need it. Talk to us a little bit about sustainability of your business and maybe some of your marketing techniques to build your business once you started it. Yeah, I think uh, I, I think I alluded to this before, um, but the number one marketing strategy is getting listed on Google Maps, or I think it's called Google My Business these days. You know, that would be number one. And, and having uh, patient reviews there, it's huge because... Um, there's a lot of other things I've done to get our business listed on and make sure it shows up on Google or for searches. Um, but those are low lying searches for physical therapy in Greensboro and they'll, people will find us. Um, there's some other marketing strategies that we use. Uh, the big one is email marketing. Mm-hmm. So I have a ebook or like a guide. It's like a back pain guide and people can download it from our social media pages, from our Instagram, from our website. And when people come into that series, it's a fairly long email series um, that gives them some more information and moves them into um, the know, like, and trust stage so that if they were kind of a cold prospect before, now they become warmer, they know us, and then they'll, when they need some help, they'll likely uh, request uh, help for, um, from us through one of our application funnels that we have. Mm. Um, you also asked about sustainability. So I think... <clears throat> it's slightly different, but the sustainability is my practice. We started in 2009 and we're still going, I've got multiple therapists and I'm not actively treating patients and I've helped thousands of other PTs do the same others, you know, scale to multiple locations. And there are a lot of um, physical therapy and healthcare practices that are doing it. I think the, the sustainability, um, reality comes down to the business owner's mindset around their business and who they're helping and why. And if they have support and have a vision of what it wants to be, it can be whatever we want it to. Um, Because like insurance is dying and it's only decreasing. It's only getting harder. And really it's having a, whether it's an in-network business or a a network, like a mix of cash and insurance, like it's going to have to go that way because um, what's not sustainable is accepting an insurance contract that pays me less than it costs to operate my business. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so I think those are the those are the two things I see. But I think the main two of the main things we do for growing the business is um, Google search and follow up with email. And then we've done heavy training on sales. And a lot of people in healthcare think sales is yucky, but it's not a four letter word. It's actually a five letter word. Um, but we've all had probably bad experiences with sales. But our sales process is all about asking the right questions, not about pushing anything or recommending something people don't need. It's, it's figuring out what people really want. And if we have uh, a solution, then we'll make an offer for them. Mm. You said several valuable things out there and I'll just, I'm going to throw this out there for anybody listening. Yeah. I have been um, on my own healthcare plan for the last five years. In other words, I don't work for an employer that pays me health insurance. And the point of telling you this is that I've successfully taken care of my family of four uh, by taking care of my own health care needs. A lot of people are hesitant to start their own businesses or change careers or make decisions in their lives because they feel they're so hooked to their health care system at their current situation. It's okay to step out. <laughs> you know, here's the solution we're talking about in yeah. physical therapy. Um, that, just a little sidebar there. But yeah. you said, uh, you talked about email list. And, and by the way, I saw a post that you had on Instagram. It says you need to be in control of your most valuable asset. And that's your email list. I've been telling people this for the last couple of years. And um, I don't think we can talk about it enough. And I'm glad that you brought it up. Um, how often are you using that email list? Are you building that email list? How are you generating more leads for that list? Yeah, I'm. it's a great question. I think that... Um, I think the danger is people will build up like a large social media following, but they don't have the people on their email list. Yeah. And there's, so they'll, 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 I had someone message me the other day and say, Hey, I was asking you some questions a few weeks ago. I was the person, um, on this account, it had 70,000 uh, followers, but it got shut down and this is my new account. And I was like, okay, you know, here's the reality. This is really happening. It's, it's, we can control the email list because I can download it and put it on a spreadsheet. Even if it's, you know, I say, you know, the company I'm using and the software I'm using isn't like owned by me. It's like, I can still put this list in my pocket. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why it's valuable. Um, so what do we do is to get people onto the list. I'm offering something free of value, not just a newsletter. It's not just to follow me or subscribe for updates. It's here's the five steps to um, fix your back pain once and for all, or the, or the, um, pelvic, we have a pelvic PT checklist. It's like, Hey, if you have, if you think you might have a pelvic floor or core strength problem, you need to download this um, to know exactly, you know, like what are the signs and symptoms of this? That it's a problem that can be easily solved. Um, for my coaching business, I have a cash PT checklist. It's all the steps that you need to take to launch a physical therapy cash practice. So those things, it solves a problem for people and it's valuable. They'll easily give up their name and email address for that. Yeah. And yeah. then we follow up with them on a regular basis. Um, so I email my list multiple times a week. Um, some people will write a personal email every day. Some people write a personal email once a week. Um, we do it in a couple of ways. Um, I post to my podcast. And so there's an email that goes out for the podcast. When we post to the blog, there'll be an email that goes out to that. And then I'll write a personal email generally uh, as I'm promoting something. But I also automate this whole a lot of this so i have automated sequences to move people to webinars and move people into um, courses and training programs and just with that combination it's it's enough stuff um, to do but if someone's just getting started think about it like this move people onto your email list through something of value that you can give them for free it's not necessarily solving their problem and fixing the situation it's bringing them awareness to the problem and how to get help and then it's just connect with them on a regular basis, maybe once a week. Here's what I learned this week about my X, Y, and Z, the problem. And here's how I've solved it for my clients or patients. And you just kind of share your life and share a story with them. And then when you figure out, oh, here's something I want to sell or a program I have, then we can send a simple email of like, hey, Jim, um, are you still interested in getting help with your back? And you might reply and be like, yes, tell me more. You know, it's just super simple. Um, how would you correspond to your best friend or your best friend's um, sister or, uh, you know, an acquaintance who, you know, you don't know personally, but, uh, you know, 
you were personally connected to. And I will write that email. So in with my avatar in mind, but it goes out to hundreds or actually thousands of people at the same time. Yeah. It, it's interesting. You brought it up about people have big social media followings with no emails. I, I have a friend, she's in, in physical fitness. She's a trainer. She has 350,000 followers on her social media, just on one of her channels. Who knows it collectively? Yeah. And I asked her, I said, How, how's your email list? And she says, I don't have one. Hmm. And the reason why it came up is she was being blocked for some of the things that she was saying politically. Yeah. And uh, I said, look, you know, if you get shut down, you're out of business. You know, all your sponsors are gone. And, and I don't, to this day, I don't know if she followed up on getting some emails, but um, it is so important. And especially when you talk about your avatar and communicating with people, like maybe it's your friend's sister or your friend himself, because we can communicate exactly the message that we want people to hear yeah. and not something superficial in a picture or something. So uh, I, th yeah. that's probably one of the most valuable tools of this entire phone call <laughs> Be Crazy. because people just don't, they, they don't put enough stock into that. What are some of the other uh, advices that you give people that are get, getting into uh, the business or uh, a different type of business as entrepreneurs? Yeah, I think the number one thing um, would be to remember in business, perfection, well, perfection is a business killer and 80% is good enough. Like you doesn't need to be perfect. It's never going to be ready. It just needs to be done. And when it's done, that's when you put it out there. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise you'll never collect all the email addresses. Um, you'll, you'll miss out on some and, and speed is the, uh, speed, speed wins in business in, uh, I mean, it wins in a lot of other things, but, uh, you know, most people are trained to, um, think slow, um, overanalyze the different options and figure it out. But, you know, I mean, Jim, you know, like in a race, you, you just got to go with your instinct. You can't analyze. Um, I, you know, I, I was ra racing bicycles and there was a guy who, uh, was on my team and he was world-class in rowing. Like he was like the world champion in, uh, the two man rowing, amazing lungs and, and, and heart capacity. Um, but he didn't know like the strategy mm -hmm. and I was sitting there one day and we're in a race and I said, Hey, um, go, go get in the break. And he was like, do you think, and he wanted to have a debate because, you know, he went to Harvard and I went to Duke. So of course he's smarter than me. <laughs> and, um, by the time we're done debating, you know, I was like, well, the, the opportunity has gone and he took off and he fell in the next corner. He tried to catch him, but he did it at the wrong time. He slipped him some gravel in the corner and the break was the one that went. And he said, why didn't you get in there? I said, dude, I'm not strong enough to get yeah. in that break, you know, but I know that that's the one that's going to win. And it was just those moments of, it's not just the hesitation. It's the, it's the I don't know, lack of trust in our own ability to make a decision yeah. and correct later on. And I think that gets in the way of more, um, want to be entrepreneurs than anything else mm -hmm. because once you get over that your business is going to keep growing but uh it's the thing that stumbles people up so much yeah and and i think people strive like like you said they they want that perfect launch or that perfect yeah. opportunity and and that doesn't always exist like you said 80 percent could be good enough yeah. i i always think about this podcast i knew nothing about podcasting when i launched my first show over three years ago. Now we're over 200 shows and 60,000 plus subscribers. You know, that started from just trying to do my best and, and then being consistent, persistent, and, and, you know, doing the work. And if more people understood that in anything they're trying to do, we'd see a lot more successful entrepreneurs out there. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah. But there's so much doubt and fear. And uh, people think that when it when they fail, it's done. Like, but failure isn't fatal. And we just have to keep on get up and keep on going. Yeah. I, I love your mission. By the way, on the bottom of your bio that I received, it says, Dr. LeBauer is on a mission to save 100 million people from unnecessary surgery by helping other passionate therapists succeed in business and learn how to market directly to patients. Uh, there's something to be said for that. You know, um, I had a knee injury and fortunately had a, a great ortho that I went to. And he said, look, Jimmy, he goes, there's no reason to cut you open. We can, we can rehab this. And he was one of those doctors that want to avoid the knife and, and focus on our own strengths and abilities to repair ourselves. And it sounds like that's exactly your mission as well. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And it's great that you had that experience because so many of my patients haven't, they've said to me, I, Dr. Bauer, I regret having the surgery or I regret having, or, I wish I'd saw you first mm -hmm. because they just go through so much surgery. I mean, I had a patient, I know we're 
close on time, but I had a patient who was a firefighter and she was the 